Good evening. Welcome to Talanoa Sa'o. My name is Ali Tiki Lee and this is Liao Tilzi. We are going to be speaking around the topics that matter to you, that matter to our nation, that matter to our future. And we are appearing on APNA 36. It is an exciting time to know what's happening, to know what's going on, and we are absolutely blessed to be here to speak to you tonight. Leo, would you like to say a little bit about yourself before we get started? Talo for lover, my name is Leo. I am of Samoan and Scottish descent and I've been here most of my life. Um, so I'm really excited to be here and to discuss um, things that are current, uh, things that will matter um, <clears throat> in the near future with our uh, Pacific Island people, well, here in New Zealand anyway, and our nation. So really excited to be here with you, Elliot. Awesome. I think. <laughs> I can fix you on that one. <laughs> oh, wicked, wicked. And one thing that we're going to be doing as well, we're going to be having discussions about things that are going on, things that are happening in our lives. We're also going to have interviews with different people. We're going to be bringing up things that are happening outside, things that are happening on the political and on the entertainment area we're going to have a lot of fun and we're going to be bringing this to you this is yeah. local content this is for you to know exactly what's happening in your home in your life in your future so buckle in and we're about to have a nice little chit chat awesome okay so thank you so much for joining us and we're going to have a little discussion now about things that have been going on and things that are of great import and the first one that I, I do want us to have a little discussion on is that last year, Labour has now won full control. They are now in total control. Yes, there was a type of deal with the Greens, but we all know that Labour is in control. Now, Liao, you know, the, we talk about Pacifica people, Labour, we, we basically are told that we have to vote Labour and, and all of these sorts of things. How do you feel about the situation with Labour in control and especially mm. with the Pacifica uh, elements in there? Okay, so when I was growing up um, with my father, he uh, came here obviously as an immigrant and he uh, was helped by Labour. Mm. So he was in a place where he wanted out of gratitude to to vote for Labour because they were initially here um, helping support us and my sick mother and my family. So this was a constant every three year, three or four years or three years that we voted. He was he constantly told us that Labour was there for him. So as it turns, <laughs> things and a little bit of social engineering uh, that has happened through Labour, they've become a lot more. They've changed. So, okay, so first off, let's have a, you're talking about social engineering. What, what is that? What is social engineering? So social engineering uh, creates a place where, okay, I'll just go to maybe our smacking one, <laughs> which is smacking. Hot, smacking, smacking. <laughs> which uh, greatly affected. <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, that was, that was kind of normal in my mm. household. Anyway, um, but those who are naughty, of course, wasn't like that but no so the the anti-smacking um, that came into being um, discipline is definitely one thing which I see lacking now quite a bit and discipline is different from what they called abuse or child abuse or smacking so this is one of the big areas that I've seen changed so this is of course you, this is of course the one that Helen Clark wanted to have pushed and she yep. utilized uh, I believe it was the Green Party yes. to put it through and then they were able to make that law so make it anti-smacking so if yeah, you were so snapped then that's right mm. so the parents actually became a lot more afraid of disciplining their children mm. um, and what happened with that is it changed the society of our families. Uh, the fabric of our families began to change. Mm. We could no longer discipline mm. our children in, in a way that was meaningful to them, you know? Mm. And it wasn't abuse. In fact, 
probably the child abuse has grown even more so because of frustration that you have from not knowing how to discipline your children. Well, so we've you, gone back right. to yep. Yep. we've gone back to something even worse uh, for I, this. I can actually yes. So in actual fact, there has been some studies that have just come out over the past week only, really? uh, which has stated which has been very clearly evidencing that if a child is loved and has physical correction as part of a toolbox of correction, you know, they get the fussy every now and then, if they are getting to that level of being naughty, then in actual fact, they are coming out to be better people. Yeah. And so when the government snatched that away and said, no, no, the government knows better than our ainga, our whanau, uh, yeah. then they know then what that has done is, as you've said, has changed the, the family situation a little bit mm. for the worse. It's actually made it less, uh, uh, much harder. And the government has then said, no, we are the government, we're Labour, we know better than you do how to look after your kids. Well, we have, I mean, I have three boys, and they thrived on boundaries. Mm. So boundaries are really good because it actually tells them that, I love you, mm. that you can't go past this because we care about you. You know, you can't stand on the side of the road and yell at your child, come back, mm. <laughs> come back, you know, and, and just allow them to have those consequences when they're so young. So it's the same with the type of discipline that you, you, you have for your children. You're telling them, I love you, which is the exact opposite mm. to what, what they sold yep. to the rest of New Zealand, mm -hmm. that this was good, that you stopped... Abusing, mm. so that's what the word they use. The narrative they had was a child abuse. Well, uh, <coughs> verified and substantiated child abuse has actually gone up. Right. So that's actually something that has happened. Is that since the anti-smoking bills come in, it hasn't gone stagnated or gone down. It's actually gone up, and it's not. We're not talking about uh, corrective measures being viewed as child abuse. We're talking about absolute child abuse. It has gone up. Mm. It hasn't gone down. Notifications have gone very high up as well. So we know that the anti smoking bill is not working at all. We've also seen, and for you out there at home, if you, if you look for Mum on a Mission, Mum on a Mission, it's a mm. YouTube free documentary, and it will show very clearly the families who have been absolutely devastated by the anti smoking bill. Good parents have been yeah. persecuted for these uh, for just looking after their children in a in a decent way. So, I think Family First had, you know, was on to that as well. Yes. Uh, Bob McCosker, who, mm. you know, who actually pursued that because this is what was happening in all of our societies. All of us were afraid to uh, discipline our children. Mm. And, and in fact, what, what it made them do is they felt like they had no consequences. Mm. So without consequences... You begin to have adults who feel like they have no consequences either. And it's interesting, you know, at the start of the year, within the first week, two weeks, we had a 14 year old who has killed a person and is being charged for murder. We've had uh, several being driven around and uh, stealing various cars and being chased by cops and filming themselves. We've had more young people, especially in South Auckland who are starting to engage in gang activity. Sure. We also know that now gangs, especially in Southside, uh, that gangs are up 34% under Labour. So since Labour started, wow. we know that the gangs have increased by another 34%, which is shocking, it's never happened before. So anti smacking uh, gang activity, young people going down. Is there any other part about Labour and perhaps Labour slash Greens that is damaging our mm. Pacifica community? That because you I think in that point around that time was the prostitution bill as well. Yes, and O2. Where, yep. where there was, it was made legal. Mm. What, what in that society, again, we're, we're breaking down the fabric of, of families. Mm. You know, that actually, as a family, we create homes mm. where we're having, you know, uh, prostitution being part of, you know, everyday life. You know, it breaks up families. Yes, I'm, it does. Yep. You know, I'm, it's, it's shocking to me how much of this engineering has become normalised mm. um, in New Zealand and for us to see what free love looks like now. Yep. You know, even in um, the doctors, they have a dispensary of condoms mm. available there. You know, whereas in, you know, quite a few years ago, <laughs> we would not even consider or even think mm. about that. We would come to a point where actually yeah, we're ready to get married. 
I know that sounds old fashioned, but actually, no, no. <laughs> marriage works. Yeah, it really does. Marriage works, <laughs> and, and and I think in terms of the and so you're right. Labor Labor Party was the one who brought out decriminalisation of prostitution, sure. and what we found is a Harvard researcher actually looked into the numbers and found that what happened when we decriminalised prostitution is that the age of the prostitutes went down, so we had more and more child ah, prostitutes, okay. and human trafficking went up. Okay. So those who would come in and were specifically pushed by pimps to engage in it. I it's mean, not healthy. And the, yeah. the prostitution survivors themselves taught me a word which I've used on Twitter, and some people have hated me using it. Yeah. And that is, prostitution is commercialised rape. It is commercialised right. rape. And when you're thinking about what Labour has done, they've decriminalisation of prostitution, they've brought in the anti-smacking bill. Under Labour, we've had more gang members training up than ever before. Uh, I, I would also even put out there that Labour is now saying to our children, you know, that you are not a boy and you're not a girl, right. that you are some sort of waving thing on, on a, uh, you're not a boy, you're not a girl, but you're on some sort of link aspect. That is, right. It's all over the place. So we do know, I do know that uh, under the documentation by the Ministry of Education, we've got, uh, we've got, now got embedded pure gender ideology, and that means that is basically your child is being taught that they're not a boy or a girl, but that they're that they anything and everything. Uh, seven and eight-year-olds are now being told that they must know what all the sexual orientations are and that they, they must be aware that... Uh, gender can be absolutely fluid. That is wrong. It is not according to Pacific traditional values. Uh, you've got also now they're pushing a new structure that's going into schools this year, and that is from early childhood, primary school, and secondary school, and that is critical race theory. That means that if you are Māori, you are oppressed. If you are Pacifica, you are partly oppressed. And if you're a white person, then you are somehow guilty of all of these things sure. and you should feel a bit guilty. Again, these are for children. And I, I think I think back to when I was growing up, I didn't care who I was playing with. I didn't care who anything was. Your skin colour didn't matter. What mattered was, what, how was your attitude towards me? How do we interact together? Sure. And I think that's a really big part. One of the great things about, I think, about being Pacifica is that we have had such a strong work ethic, which has allowed us to excel in society. Yep. Now that Labour has been bringing in these social engineering yep. ideas, decriminalisation, prostitution, anti-smacking bill, white people, bad, your, ch your children's not a, a boy or girl, but anything mm -hmm. else, I think now we're starting to see our people starting to become a bit uh, dropped down, and I think it's really important. So... Labour for Pacifica, good, bad, what do you think? We're now in a cycle where Labour is in charge of us. Just, um, just going back to the, um, the different genders, I, I think what that becomes is a breakdown of our, our identity mm. and who we are. And as Pacific Island uh, community, our faith has, been, has had a foundation in God. And so as I see it, and as I see it being taught to younger and younger, um, our children, we're starting to see us become more and more confused. Where we have never been victims. Mm. Uh, our yep. Pacific Island people yep. have never been victims. Yep. I see my father, my grandfather, they've all been hard workers. Mm. So when you start to bring in that kind of ideology into, into our Pacific Island people, we start to be confused. Mm. And we start to wonder, who actually am I? Mm. And then they go down that whole track where Oh no, everyone's thinking like this, so I can't think different. Yep. I can't be different, and I can't actually stand on my own two feet and say, this is who I am, this mm. is my identity. I'm Pacific Island, you know, who, who come from, you know, people who had identity, who were never victims. So I, I think this is a coming, we need to come back to that, yep. come back to who we actually are, yep. and, and stop listening to this echo chamber of of these words that come out to say, you know, you need to be more woke, you need to be, mm. you know, you need to be... Um, I hate that word, woke. <laughs> you know, to be awakened is one thing, yep. but to be yep. woke. And just continually hearing it from everywhere, from university, mm. from schools, from the people you hang out with, because you don't 
there's no courage in you to mm. speak. Actually, I don't agree with that. Mm. I, I, is it okay to disagree? Oh no, not anymore. Mm. So we, we've started with the, the breakdown of fabric of society and what that's done is that we've lost our identity. Yep. So I think, you know, over this part, next year as we go through these discussions, always come back to, hey, who are we mm. as Pacific Island people? Who yeah. are we as Samoan? Who are we as Nguyen? What is, what is the core of who we are? I think that's you, so important. You've caught on to a big one, and I think this is a really powerful one. And this, I think, is where we did get abandoned by Labour. So uh, ever since Labour brought in the dawn raids, and then they brought in the anti-smoking bill, then they brought in decriminalisation and prostitution, and then they brought in all of these other bills, then I, I think that they have abandoned. And I think there is no better evidence than who we have as Minister for Pacific Peoples. Now, for you out there who don't know, the current Minister for Pacific Peoples is Alpito William Seal. And he, has, he is also the Minister who voted all the way through for the most brutal abortion bill we've ever had. We, New Zealand now has the most cruel abortion law in Western culture. No one has more brutal than what we've got right now. If you find an abortionist who's willing to do a partial birth abortion, under New Zealand law you can do that. And it was actually Alpito who voted all the way through, supporting it all the way through. And that is utterly disgusting as far as I'm concerned. Can you say what a partial birth abortion a partial, is? You, and yeah. so a partial birth uh, abortion is one where the baby comes partially out of the womb and then usually baby is turned upside over, a scissors placed into the back of the neck, uh, right sorry, in the uh, base in the head, right oh, during, during, straight up to birth and during birth. So birth out, okay. uh, scissors goes in here and then the scissors are open and the idea is that that splits the... Uh, area in there. It's a, it is a, a horrific thing to be. And one thing I've always been deeply proud of is no matter what island, uh, one of the strongest Pacifica values that has been always in our traditions and our culture is that babies are precious, life is vital. Okay. And for the current Minister of Pacific Peoples to sit there and put the thumbs up every part of the way for the abortion bill to go through is for me uh, an example of how Labour is bad for Pacific people, even though we still believe that they're good for us. So they have our faces, but not our voices. They have our faces, but not our voices. <laughs> it is the ultimate toxic relationship. That's what I think. Uh, so yeah, so so I think that's something that we would that we have about uh, in terms of Labour. So uh, let's even talk about uh, further because of course one thing we know with Pacifica is that uh, COVID, of course has come in, and I want to be real careful because I don't want to say that COVID has hurt our businesses, COVID has hurt our jobs, COVID has hurt our people. We need to make sure that it is the government's policies that have been a reaction of COVID that has gone through. So in terms of uh, our land, our people, what, what do you think now? What do you think about the how the government's reacted with COVID? Well, initially um, with COVID, you know, we, we were hard and fast according to our Prime Minister. Oh really? Hard and yeah. fast? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but um, our borders are still open mm -hmm. and even to today we have um, cases because the border's been open. So New Zealand has done their part. I, I would say most of us, this, our team of five million, mm. have all done our part. What we don't know is that they won't tell us that the borders are not. You can't tell me over this whole year, past year, that every single person that has come into our country has been people returning. Mm. But there's no transparency. I'm sorry, Labour does not have a transparent you know, and most of the things that they've done. Yeah, well, you're right, because also we've got a lot of family members out there, yeah. heaps of family members whose uh, uh, either their parents, in a couple of cases their children are terminally ill, they will pass away, and they are not allowed to come back in because of the government rules on it. Yet at the same time, the government has been giving exemptions to people to come in, and I believe mm. the last example that I heard of was the RuPaul drag queen show, the one that they want to do the filming here, so they've been given exemptions to come over uh, and do their filming in New Zealand. Now, I find that really hard to handle because, yeah. again, we believe in life, we believe in love, we believe that if to hold the hand of someone who is going to die 
you know, one that we love that is going to die. These, those people cannot be allowed, that, oh, sorry, the government has said that they're not allowed to come in. Mm. But on the other stage, these other guys might bring us some couple of hundred thousand dollars into our economy. So you know what, sweet, you guys can come. Is I it find the same it, with Avatar? It is the same thing with Avatar. Yeah. I, I find it really unfair. Uh, if you're going to do something like that, at least bring in those people who are, they're never going to see their children, they're never going to see their family yeah. again. That's it. And, and I think that our government can actually make it safe by bringing them in, uh, rather than saying, right, you got money, sweet, we'll let you guys come in. Do you know, I think it comes back down then to our Pacific Island core values mm. about how we feel about families and how we feel about, um, you know, uh, the people around us that we care about. So that, that's what we want to emanate to our government. But our government, in reflection, is let's bring in Avatar, let's uh, mm. bring in a level four, like, um, you know, the, the, the cup, you know, that all of these kind of things that we go, what? You know, you go, what? Māori Pacifica are apparently being told that, uh, that we should be used to have the vaccine used on first. Okay, I'm going to use the R word for that. <laughs> Am I allowed? <laughs> that to me, the first time I read that, I was like, that is racist. Why is it racist? How it's coming from labour. I know, exactly. Like, why are, you, why are you targeting straight to our Pacific Island and Māori? Why? We are healthy. There's a very guinea piggish feel going on here, <laughs> I think. Uh, I think so. Mm. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... Maybe Labour's not as cracked up as they make themselves out to yep, be. Yep, Do you yep. think we're coming to that conclusion? Uh, I, th I think we're starting to move to that conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think, yeah. All right. So uh, right now, now that's what's happened. Uh, uh, COVID. The examples there. Oh, one. You know, borders. Should we close the borders? Like we, we've had now the new UK strain. Uh, and uh, it, it's coming through from UK or at least UK areas that are popping through. Should we be closing the borders to these guys? When the should we have closed the border originally the first time? Sooner. Hmm. Well, if we are wanting to lock down the whole country because of it, because of it, you would think, out of logic, that you would close the borders. You know, it's like leaving one of the side doors open to just, well, how else are we going to use that narrative? <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I'm a little bit psychistic. <laughs> you know, well, was... I, I think one of the great things, that, and this is something that was reported by PMN, and that was that it was actually, it was actually a Pacifica person who on the 25th of January said that New Zealand should close its borders. It was not Labour, it was not National, it was not any, it was not those parties. Uh, it was actually the Pacifica people who said, close the borders. That was on the 25th of January, and that was also reported out on the PMN uh, news articles. The, the Labour government did not close the borders properly until eight weeks later. Oh. And the virus was already in. Sure. So if we had done that, we would have been pretty much sweet. Because, and then we wouldn't have had to lock down the whole country, seeing the suicides that we've seen, seeing the breakdown of the businesses that we've seen, seeing the, the absolute layoffs and the horrific forms and the increase of government spending that mm. disempowers our people after a while. And all the bills that were passed all while the we bills that, that were time. Passed. You know, I just, yeah. uh, just your mind just, it just boggles at what, what was able to be done in that time. Absolutely right. And normally they would be very slow at passing bills, wouldn't they? So, <laughs> so we've got a few minutes left. Yeah. This is uh, going to be a big one. We've got Biden as the American president. People are going to be foolish if they think that the American president does not have some sort of uh, relation to us here in New Zealand. Mm. How do you think the Joe Biden presidency is going to affect us? Is it going to be good? Is it going to be bad? What do you think is going to happen? I think regardless, there's going to be a ripple effect um, from America. I see, since there's been so much controversy around it in regards to possible fraud, maybe. <laughs> I, 
Oh, you the... mean like an election fraud? Yeah, maybe, gotcha. Gotcha. possibly. Yeah, possibly. I'm possibly. not sure though. I've, mm. I've seen quite a few people at his rallies. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, and there were the. There was, of course, uh, going back a few weeks, the capital protests where some people did uh, go in there. I do want to point out, of course, that. I find it absolutely hypocritical for Justin Ardern and Helen Clark and for even for a lot of the Democrats over in the US. I find it really hypocritical that they're condemning the capital protests, but they have not condemned at all or even discussed the Black Lives Matter riots and also the Antifa riots where whole businesses have been burnt to the ground. A lot of them are black uninsured businesses. People have been murdered. So many people have been yeah. murdered. So many people have been assaulted. So much money has been lost. In fact, even in 2018, Antifa and BLM were able to go into the uh, government chamber of one of the states, and you, you wouldn't have heard it. You wouldn't have heard of, of that, but it, it happened. It's only because it was a conservative slash right-wing group who actually uh, went in there. I find it incredibly hypocritical. That said, I do find it, a, uh, I think it's a setback. I think that those people should be charged, assuming that they are indeed part of that right-wing conservative mm -hmm. movement. If they are, uh, I, or I think whoever they are, charge them hard, they, they uh, should be uh, condemned, because that is not the way to go forward with disagreeing with, with things. The, the thing is that I've, um, how I've seen uh, unfold is that if your narrative Right? If your narrative is to start to uh, form uh, one more government, then this would all uh, play out the way it's meant to. Yeah. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So to them, they will condemn it. Yes. Because this is all following yes. you know, what you would see as um, governments and countries coming together mm. and saying we could do this better mm. together yep. you know and you have you hear the slogans you know and I, I'm, I'm not going to touch there but that is something that you start to see why the, the condemnation is coming from specific countries yep. and not from others yes yes that's right that's because right. you know the ones who are who are part of UN mm. will, will condemn it mm. You know, That's so right. these are the kind of things that you look at and you go, actually, if you start to understand the bigger picture, mm. then that's why it makes sense to them. You know, even though we go, what just happened? Oh, wait, it's just gone down. Oh, wait, there's another. Oh, let's just ban everyone from speaking anything that remotely says truth. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. So thank you so <laughs> much for listening to us. Uh, my name is Ellie Tiki Lee. And I'm Liao Tilsley. So thank you so much for joining us here on Talanoa Sa'o. Don't forget, if you want to be a part of the stories that we have to share, we're going to be doing interviews, we're going to bring to you different people who are doing some wonderful things, we're going to bring some stuff that makes us cry, some things that make us laugh, and, and that's life. So you're going to see along the bottom of the screen some contact details. If you've got a story, if you want to have your story placed, or a story of a great story that you know, get in touch with us. Let us know. We're speaking here for Talanoa Sa'o, Fa'amanuia i le atua, i loa inga. <laughs>